Argentina in 2002 is much like Venezuela now. Hello, friends. My name is Rennie Santanarese, and in my position as office holder I come with the endorsement from the High Council of the Sector of the Universe. The issue before us is from the year of 2001 and 2002 when the nation of Argentina was choked to near extinction by New York bankers who were at that time rearranging Argentina's peso currency to one of one to one with the dominating US dollar in order to curb the nation's runaway inflation. That move brought incredible hardship on the people. While Venezuela is not cornered by bankers calling in her national debts, she is however being financially throttled by neocons running Washington today, with several other nations in tow, having joined in with the efforts of a financial as well as a gold embargo to deny the legitimate Maduro government movement in looking after the financial needs of its own people. So, let's begin with Argentina in 2002, her political and financial turmoil, and see for ourselves the advice I gave fitting quite well into what Venezuela stands in need of today. Quote. Argentina's money folly is backfiring. Edmonton, INA Canada, December 9, 2001, by Rennie Centenaries. If Argentina is an example for how the rest of the nations manage their currency affairs, then it is no wonder things go awry in these countries. I hear that Argentina had adopted the American dollar on a one-to-one -one basis, one dollar equals one peso. This arrangement was struck with the intent on placing a lid on Argentina's traditional runaway inflation and devaluation of currency. The price to pay for the link-up of the peso with the American dollar was that the Argentinian government would not be allowed to create legal peso tender to cover for any shortfall on their expenses. Any Argentinian requirement for more legal tender was to be negotiated with the IMF and World Bank in the form of loans subject to interest charges. Such talks are currently underway, by the way. In the meantime ordinary citizens are denied full cash access to their own funds, which effectively prevents them from functioning orderly within the jurisdiction of running their own personal financial matters, thanks to America's prohibition on Argentina to adjust the money supply in accordance with rightful demands of their citizens. Well oh well, where do I begin? Sometimes linear thought expression is clumsy for conveying a singular picture of a situation all at once, but I must try lest I fail to help you understand what game is being played on the nations. When Argentina suffered from runaway currency inflation the government officials did one thing wrong. It was not the principle of money creation per se, but the government's failure to have such power applied on loans incurred which make up the national debt. Had the government forced the banks to accept government-authorized funds, constitutionally called legal tender, as payments toward the cancellation of Argentina's national debt, then such action would have resulted in a cost reduction of running Argentina's government which would have meant the need for a reduction of taxes or higher salaries for its workers, and would have reversed the spiral of inflation downward, as all cost reductions reverse inflation downward. Inflation is not being caused by the printing of new currency to meet the demands for goods and services among the people, but by ever escalating costs of providing the movement of goods and services, be they increased costs of operating the government or those of the industry providing income for the people. A growing population demands a corresponding growth of the nation's money supply. Fail to allow the amount of currency to grow accordingly, and what you will have is a nation full of people not being able to look after themselves financially. When the arrangement between Argentina and the United States was struck all Argentinian national debts to the international bankers were left intact, which in itself placed the nation at an instant disadvantage concerning her obligations of regular debt payments to New York bankers. At that point the only source for funds toward interest payments on the national debt was income the nation earned from exports of goods and services, and if the world would not give the Argentine economy sufficient business to match national debt payments, then the only source from which New York could possibly be paid is currency in circulation among the people. 
the government of Argentina used the people's accounts as security for their debt payments to the bankers in New York and forbade their citizens to cash in their own bank account assets. How sinister! Here we have a classic example of how the people's livelihoods are sacrificed on the altar of the banker's system, and all of this manipulation is done totally irrespective of the situation on the ground which provides for an abundance in goods and services. However the nation's capacity to look after everyone's needs is made to sit dormant as the debauched money system gives the people an artificial lack of purchasing power as they try to access their own generated wealth. After all is said and done, what is my advice to the Argentinian government? Detach the peso from linkage to the American dollar. Establish an honest exchange rate between your peso and the US dollar by gauging it to your production costs, i.e. cost of a loaf of bread in USA vs. Cost of the loaf of bread in Argentina. Fix it. Don't let it float except at intervals when a review is needed for continued fairness, for should you embark on a journey of cost reductions for the movement of your goods, then an exchange rate review to the US dollar becomes mandatory unless you wish to give your products away to the Americans at half or quarter the price of their value in America. Tell the New York banker to go to hell. Tell him you owe him nothing, for his services to your country have merely been in the form of some ink out of his antique pen, which could have been provided by yourself at a better quality for sure. Remind him that his usury charges constitute no less than an fraudulent effort on his part to loot your country of its resources in materials and manpower. Reassume your governmental right to the creation of the nation's credit, for that is central for the regaining of the nation's economic destiny. Seek means of cost reductions at the monetary level without imposing hardship on your people in the form of layoffs which would cause them loss of income. I can certainly help you with this one. And should you have succeeded in making every Argentinian a millionaire with only a few pesos in his account then chuck your money system altogether into the trash bin of the ages where it belongs, never again to be used for the enrichment of the few at the expense of the many. Argentinians ready for new era economics. Edmonton, Ina Canada, December 21, 2001, Rennie Centenaries. It seems the bloodied international New York bankers have by default introduced the Argentinian people into the economic system of the new era. The America-imposed money system has denied them access to their own production and now the Argentinians have begun helping themselves to the fruits of their own labor by taking from stores and malls what rightfully belongs to them, cutting out the profiteering middleman plus the heartless banker out of New York. While this new way of shopping is still done in panic and at the risk of being shot, for the system gives it a negative connotation by calling such practice looting, all we have to do is make this new form of shopping legal, and what you have is the next thing to paradise, for an equally distributed right of access to the nation's production includes those shopkeepers who will not have to pay a red peso in order to have their looted stock replaced or their broken windows fixed. Likewise the manufacturers of all these stolen commodities will also not have to pay a single green peso slash dollar for farm products or raw materials these products in high demand by the people are being made from. Even landlords don't need to collect any more rent from the people, for the landlords won't have to pay any more property taxes or repair costs to their buildings, for the worn out carpets can just be had for the asking from the warehouse full of new ones whose owner just got his broken windows and beaten down doors fixed for free by a contractor who was not worried any more about his own costs of living expenses, for they all had come down to zero after the president had stepped down and the builder of the new era was consulted for advice concerning what could be done to fix the pitiful situation of the Argentinian people. Let there be no mistake about it, what is happening in Argentina today will land at the doorstep of many countries tomorrow, and behind it all you have New York's and London's laughing bankers, who think you are all idiots for falling for his ploy of debt creation and interest charges on national debts. Paradise has no competitor, and maybe the banker is right in his assessment of your intelligence, 
for as long as you let the looters be shot or have them arrested, you are idiots. Argentina's new president ARSAA suspends national debt payments. Edmonton, INA Canada, December 24, 2001, Reni Centenaries. Suspending payments on Argentina's national debt is a step in the right direction and commendable. However connecting such move with assurances to New York's crooked bankers that this move does not mean Argentina will shun her $132 billion debt obligation is a mistake if President SAA means what he says. Only if that assurance to bankers is hollow and no more than a strategy with no intent to follow up on it, is such promise acceptable. All national debts are not worth the paper written on. And there needs to be no promise to pay them some time down the road. Have the funds not fulfilled their purpose when the hard-working Argentinians converted them into goods and services? Why punish the people in the aftermath of a good thing? And in all this financial wrangling one cannot even blame the banker, for he only works with governments willing to play his game. But alas, governmental foolishness is not a criminal offense. There is no law against it. The banker's guilt lies not so much in his success to peddle a debauched money system, but rather in his audacity to commandeer this world's most powerful militaries around to do his bidding. And therein lies the necessity to have him stripped of his power of enforcement, which in today's world has become mandatory in order to curtail his cruelties as we have recently seen them inflicted on Iraq and Afghanistan. Should President SAA talk tough and rip up the national debt documents to feed the chits back on the banker's plate to eat for breakfast, will the banker then shift his military priority from bombing Iraq next to one of bombing Argentina first? At least that would then show the world that the Pentagon and Britain's militaries are controlled by personages quite different from those as perceived by the people. Quote from Churchill Final Solution to Argentina's Economic Plight By René Centenaries, Grande Counselor to the Nations of Angarias Edmonton, INA Canada, January 18, 2002, René Centenaries For Argentina's new president Eduardo Duhal to merely have decided to not follow the prescriptions of the IMF and for him to resort back to Argentina's band-aid measures of past failures just does not cut it to provide immediate relief to Argentina's desperate and starving population. There is no time anymore to horse around with ineffective monetary measures designed to provide no immediate relief out of Argentina's financial crisis. What the people want and demand from their leaders is relief now. They want paid now what is owed them and have their instant access to all bank accounts restored. To these two demands by the people the new government will not yield, and even if President Duhal did, it would still not solve Argentina's problems in the long run. The people who demand restoration of access to their bank accounts or payment for their services are not enlightened. We must remember that these demands are the only way the people know how to regain access to their own production for basic survival, and these demands are being voiced out of a lack of understanding for the people's need of a return to economic principles of paradise. For too many times it seems the people of planet Angarias have reincarnated back into life streams under the tyranny of finance and they seem to have lost their subconscious remembrance of paradise itself where all trade and all production of goods and all provision of services are being rendered with the natural understanding of equal access for all to the totality of what a planet or a nation produces as a whole. The people of Argentina are faced with the contradiction of ample national productive capability versus lack of access by the people to the fruits of their own productivity i.e. lack of access to their own production. Argentinians are artificially being kept idle, unproductive, because they will not work unless they can get paid money. And so the baker will not bake bread unless he gets money to buy wheat from the farmer, and the farmer will not grow wheat unless he can do so to cover his financial costs to grow it. And as Argentina's cash in circulation is being mopped up by taxes and sent away to please the New York international bankers, Argentinians cannot eat, have no shelter, 
are denied transportation or have no clothes on their backs. And for as long as Argentina has governments who deem it more important that the banker gets paid before their people are given the ability to provide for their own needs, the people of Argentina will go without basic essentials of life, despite having labor and resources all in abundance right at their own doorsteps. Argentina has run out of time to experiment with financial acrobatics in search for a solution which perhaps could please the IMF or World Bank. What President Eduardo Duhald must do is address the people of his nation on television and over all radio stations and speak to them in perhaps the following words. My dear brothers and sisters of the soon great to be nation of Argentina. I am speaking to you, my people, from a heart of a concern for the physical welfare and well-being of all people of Argentina, and I want to see you happy again and placed into an economic environment conducive of all manners of enjoyment of life itself without feeling the sting of guilt in doing so. My people, you do have hands to labor with, so use them. You do have feet to carry you, so let them take you where you wish to go. You have a contribution to make to your nation, so be what you wish to be, a baker, a farmer, a carpenter, an engineer, a merchant, a store owner, a delivery driver, a refinery worker, a bus driver, a landlord, a factory worker, a seamstress, a teacher, or a housewife, looking after your small children. Be, what you want to be, my people, and provide for your nation all that is required of you as a contribution to a whole, and if you do that, you, my people, will not go hungry, for there will be food on your table. There will be goods in your storehouses, there will be teachers to teach your children and bus drivers to take you where you wish to go. Do all this without condition and without asking for money as payment for your services. What you will find is that people will give to you what you need for the comfort of your life as their contribution to you and all, in appreciation for having all their own needs filled in abundance. When you do this you will find that your landlord will not ask you for rent monies, for all his needs of repair and maintenance are being met by those who give to him as carpenters, plumbers, roofers, or what have you for the restoration of his building. As a nation we can no longer afford to let you, our people, starve in the midst of abundance, just because the foreign banker wants it so. Your stress level will quickly go down, and soon you will rediscover for yourselves that life has become worth living once again. What I as your president and benefactor expect you to do is go and be what you are, whether a student in university, a teacher of children, or a builder of houses. And let all those whose jobs have become redundant due to the absence of any money system in Argentina at all retrain themselves in occupations where their input to society at large becomes beneficial to the prosperity of society as a whole. However, my people, do not withhold from any man, woman, or child, that which he or she is asking for for as long as you have resources to meet the demand. I thank you for listening to my words today. I have instructed all government officials to give you guidance in case certain aspects of our new economic order are unclear to you. And should grievances or disputes arise among you as you begin to relearn what paradise is all about then my officials will provide efficient counsel as how to resolve any matter expeditiously. All governmental authority with regard to internal matters will remain intact until our nation runs like a well-oiled machine. My blessings and love is with you all. End quote.